Hello everyone, welcome to today's video. Um, in today's video, we'll be going through the selective high school placement test um, that was released uh, not too long ago. And we'll be looking at the mathematical reasoning questioning paper. Um, and it, this is for the year 2022, which was recently released. And so we'll be going through the work solutions of all 35 questions and um, yeah, so hopefully you've already had a look at it and you've familiarized yourself with these questions as you can see the different, the wide range of different questions that they can give you during the selective test. So why don't we go through these questions? Having a look at question one, it says the following. It says three packages are weighed together. Their total mass is shown on the scale. Now we've been given more information here. It says that package one has a mass of 850 grams and package two has a mass of 225 grams. And the question is this, what is the mass of package three? Okay, so what we've got to do is we're going to first find out what exactly is the total mass. And yes, the total mass is indicated on the scale, which is here. However, we need to find out the exact total mass altogether because that's not what's shown. And so if we have a look, we need to first work out the scale between 0 to 1 over here. And so you can see that there are 1, 2, 3, 4 gaps. And so you can see between 0 and 1, this would be 500 grams. And then this one would be 250 and 750. So that means between each of these little sections, that is there is a increase of 250 grams. And so we've just worked out our scales between each of these set marks. And so we can see it's in it's past two kilograms and between here it's 200, 2,250 grams. And so this here is at 2.5 kilograms or 2,500 grams. And so now that we've worked out what the total mass of package one, two, three is, we're gonna work out, try working out what package three, the mass of package three is only. And so package one and package two have been, to we've been told what their mass is. Altogether that mass, 850 plus 225 grams is 1,075 grams. Grams. And so we need to find out what is the mass of package three. Well, if we, so we simply subtract this. So 2,500 minus 1,075 is equal to 1,425 grams, which is why our answer is C. So this is question one and boys and girls, you might have noticed that this is a measurement and data question. And so it's really um, focused on your number knowledge as well as your understanding of mass. And so you can see how if you think about it, having a look at, we've done an analysis, and if you have a look at the 2021 questions, um, question one was a number and algebra question, and it was focused on arithmetic operations and determining unknowns. But a similar question that was shown in the 2021 paper was question 32, which was looking at mass as well. Okay, so um, I'll be going through, as we go through the questions, what how this compares to in the 2021 mathematical reasoning paper so you can see the similarities as well as the differences that are shown okay so let's have a look at question two now question two is a number and number problems question it's mixed and similarly in question tw in year 2021 um Question two was also a number problem to do with mixed operations. And so both questions involved a numerical question posed as a word problem, and both questions involved the usage of multiple operators. And both questions involve bundles of items inside other items. They are also of similar difficulty. So let's answer through this. It says this, question two. At a garden shop, Claire is packing plants into boxes. Now each box holds six plants. She has 149 plants. She wants to fill 27 boxes. So how many more plants does she need? Well, knowing the scenario that we're at a garden shop, let's first work out, we know 
from how the question is worded, we know that that means Claire doesn't have enough plants to fill in 27 boxes. So let's first find out how many plants are needed to fill up 27 boxes. And to do that, we need to go 27 times 6. And so 27 times 6 gives us 162. Now currently, we know she has 149 plants. So to work out how many more plants she needs, we need to go 162 take away 149, which leaves us with 13 plants more that she needs. And so that's why our answer to question two is D13. All right, so that's question two. Let's have a look at question three. Now, question three for the 2022 paper is a arithmetic operations determining unknowns question, while in the 2021 paper, it was also a number question and focusing, focusing on arithmetic operations, but um, it was more focused on multiplication. Now, if we have a look, this was um, a similar question to this question, question three, was question 27 in the 2021 paper. And the questions have similar categories and share the same classification. Now, both questions involve determining a number based on guidelines or rules given in the question. Okay, why don't we have a go solving through this question? So it says this, the diagram below follows these rules. It's the rule number one is that you have to multiply the number in the square by four. So this number needs to be multiplied by four and we need to multiply the number in the triangle by three. So this number in the triangle needs to multiply by three. Now what we need to do is we need to find the difference between the, these two results and write it in the circle. So from these two numbers, we find the difference after working it out, and then um, we have to write that into the circle here. So why don't we slowly work out, and the main question here is that it says the number in the square is greater than one, so it's gotta be much larger than one. And our main question is trying to find out what is that number within the square. So if we have a look, our final result is 14. And we know that the, the answer to the way we got to 14 was when we subtracted both of these top numbers here. Now, if we have a look, we needed to, step one, um, multiply the number in the square by four. So this number multiplied by four would give us a much larger number. Okay, so we're not too sure what it is yet. And then what we've got to do is we have to multiply the number in the triangle by three and that gave us six. And then what we needed to do is we needed to find the difference between these two results and write it within the circle there. And so if we have a look, this minus six would give us 14. And so we know that 20 take away six gives us 14. So this number here is 20. 20 something times four gives us 20. That number has to be five. And so the number in the square is C, five. So it's a matter of working backwards and just knowing how each of these rules relates to this diagram down below. So just be really um, careful and slowly working things out one by one and then seeing how they all work together is the way that you'd have steps you'd have to take to be able to solve it. Okay, so our answer to question three is C. Okay, let's have a look at now question number four. So question number four, just giving you a bit of background detail. Question number four here is a number question. It is involving arithmetic operations and fractions. Now, a similar question to this in the 2021 paper was question nine, which was number, arithmetic operations, and fractions. And both questions essentially ask the students to do the same thing, add or subtract different fractions and verify the truth behind these different statements. Now, both questions are almost identical Cool in the required calculations that were needed. Okay, but maybe a different situation. So um, let's have a look and let's try. So question four, Rana, Penny and Joshua share a pizza. So they've got a pizza here and it's being shared. Now it says Rana eats two tenths of a pizza, Penny eats four tenths of a pizza and Joshua eats two fifths of a pizza. Which of these statements is or are correct? Now, before we even check if these statements are correct, one thing you need to know, boys and girls, is that 
like when you're working with fractions, you need to make sure that they need to be in the same units. Well, the same denominators to be able to compare them a bit more easily. So two tens, four tens, they have the same denominator. So we're easily able to measure that because they're all the same size then. But two fifths, that's going to be the sizes of a fifth is a lot bigger than a tenth. And so what we're going to do is we are going to convert two fifths to an equivalent fraction of it being over 10. And so to get from five to 10, we need to multiply by two. Same thing here, multiply it by two. And so two times two gives us four. So we know officially that Joshua has actually eaten four tenths of a pizza. Okay. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to rewrite that again. Okay. So now that we know that two tenths, four tenths and two fifths, let's go through each of these. So number one, they eat the whole pizza. Do they eat, all eat the whole pizza? Well, if we have a look, two tenths plus four tenths plus four tenths, that gives us 10 out of 10, which is equal to one whole. So yes, they do eat the whole pizza. Number two, Joshua eats the least pizza. Well, Joshua and Penny both eat the same amount and Rana actually eats less than that. So we know that two is incorrect. And we have a look at number three. Number three says Penny eats twice as much pizza as Joshua. Well, Penny does not eat twice as much as Joshua because we know that Penny and Joshua eat the same amount. So we know that statement three is incorrect as well. So that means our answer to question four is A, statement one only. All right, so that's question four. Let's move on to question five. So a bit of background information about question five before we solve it. Question five is a measurement and data question. It looks at units and measure focusing on time. And a very similar question to that, to this kind of question in the 2021 paper was the um, was question 14, which was number arithmetic operations, and it was focusing on determining unknowns. Now, although the categories and descriptions are very different between the two questions, the calculation method is pretty much the same. And so further, if you look at it in a further detail, both require conversions between units of measurement. So let's have a look at the question. Question five says this, which of the following calculations shows how to work out the number of seconds in 24 days? So, so we are looking at two units of times. So we are looking at seconds and days. Now, what makes this confusing is that converting straight from seconds to days is quite tricky. You actually have to take a number of different steps to be able to finally get to that days section. So if we actually Num like order them from one unit of measurement to the next, we'd have to go from seconds, which would then go down to, or the next unit of measurements beyond that would be minutes, followed by hours, and then followed by days. So there's actually four different bits of conversions that we have to do to be able to work that out. So if we have a look at that, then we can actually use process of elimination to see how that works. And so we know we can eliminate A because A only looks at days and hours because there's only 24, 24 days and there's 24 hours. So it can't be A, can't be B either because this is just saying maybe 24 hours and 60 minutes maybe. So it can't be B. C is only looking at three different parts, days, hours, minutes. So it can't be C. Same as D, and so E would be our answer because this 24 represents how many days that needs to be worked out. This represents how many hours there are in a day. The 60 represents how many minutes there are. And this 60 represents how many seconds there are as well. And so our answer to question five is E. Okay, so having a look at question six. So question six um, here is a statistics and data, data interpretation column graph question. Um, a very similar question to this in the 2021 paper was question 16, which was also a statistics and data, data interpretation column graph question. Now both questions require the use of addition and subtraction with the numbers derived from the information um, in the column graphs. So let's have a look. Question six. 
So there are a total of 160 children in six classes in a school. Now the column graph shows the number of children in classes one to five, and the column graph for the column for class six has not been drawn, as you can see here. Now it says there are 30 children in class three altogether. And the question here is this, how many children are in class six? So what we've got to do is we've got to first take in the time to really understand how this graph has been drawn. We can see here going up, otherwise known as our Y axis, um, it's telling us about the number of children. And you can see that there is no scale that's actually been indicated. So we've actually got to work that out first. And down below across this way is our X axis and you can see our six different classes shown and there's nothing in class six shown yet. So one piece of information that we've given is that altogether there are 160 children. Now we know that there are 30 children in class six because that's what's been told to us. Now even though we know that there are 30 children we don't know what the scale is so far yet so we've got to work that out. So let's work out how many gaps there are between here because everything is all equal and then we can work out how many children there are, how much, what the scale is going up by. So if we count, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. There are here fifteen gaps. Okay, so I'm going to just write here fifteen gaps. And so to work out how many children represent each gap, we go 30 divided by 15. That's two children per gap. And so now we know that it's going up by two. So two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, and we know how it goes up continu constantly. So then we can work out what the rest of our, how many children are in the other classes. So we know in class one, there are 20 children. In class two, there are 28. Class four, there are 26. Class five, there are 24. And so working out the total here, we can see that um, 20 plus 28 plus 30 plus 26 plus 24 is 128. Now, we want to work out how many children there are in class 6. So we've got to go 160 minus 128, which leaves us with 32 children in class um, 6. So that's why our answer to question 6 is C, 32. Right, let's go over the page to question 7. So... Question seven is a number algebra, algebra determining unknowns question. And a very similar question to this in the 2021 paper was um, question 28, which was looking at number algebra, algebra determining unknowns as well. Now, both of these questions, questions 28 and seven, um, involve mass and algebra. And so determining final unknown values. So both also involve the weights of two items within a question. So let's try and answer this question and see how this works. So it says the total mass of the objects on the left side of the balancing scales is the same as the total mass on the objects on the right. So this is equal to this. As you guys can see, when you're looking at scales like this, it's trying to indicate to us that both sides are, have the same mass. Now it says every triangle has an equal mass and every square has equal mass as well. So what we're going to do is, well, let's keep reading. It says if the mass of if the of the mass of a triangle is six grams, what is the mass of a square? And these are our options given. So what we're going to do is we're going to write a number sentence to just help us work through this. So we know that on the left hand side we know that three squares plus a triangle is equal to four triangles plus one square. Now we know that the triangles here equals to six. So I'm going to write six here and this would be four times six. So this would equal to 24. So that means our next number sentence would be three square plus 6 is equal to 24 
plus square. So we've got to work through algebra here. Now, what we do know, one thing you need to understand, boys and girls, is with algebra, when you've got something that are the same, so this is called like terms, we're going to collect the like terms together. So this has to move on to the other side to come, come together with this other square here. And so this would be 3 square minus square, because once it moves on to the other side of the equals, it becomes a minus, is equal to, and you go 24, the plus changes to a minus, so it becomes minus 6. So this becomes 2 square is equal to 24 minus 6 is 18, and we work out that 1 square would then equal to 9. So that means this mass of 1 square is 9, and so our answer is D. And you can always check it out, check it just in case. Um, if you work out what 3 squares is, it's 27. 27 plus 6 would equal to the same thing here, 24 plus 9. And so then you can always check it like that. Um, another way, if you found that the algebra was a bit tricky to um, work through, would be then to do um, trial and error for each of these options. But that would definitely take a long time, and we want to be as efficient as possible. So um, just if you if you know that you're struggling a little with algebra, the best recommendations for you would be to then um, practice doing algebra. All right, let's have a look at the next part. So having a look at question eight, which was over the page. Question eight is a statistics and data, data interpretation using tables question. And a very similar question to this in the 2021 paper would be question 21, which is a statistics and data, data interpretation line graph question. Now, both questions involve data interpretation. Now, both questions involve reading and interpreting the table rather than doing any calculations. So that's why despite there being a table question in the 2021 um, 2021 paper, this question is more of a match. Okay, so having a look at question eight, this is what it says. The table shows the exact times taken by five racing drivers to complete one lap of a motor racing cycle. So you can see here the names and their times that were taken. Now the question is, who were the fastest three drivers in order starting with the fastest? Now one thing that may confuse you boys and girls is that when you're looking at time or when you're looking at comparing and ordering something from the best to the worst, normally... If the number is um, larger, then that is the one who comes first. But when it comes to time, you got to understand that the shorter the time, the, so the smaller the number, it is actually the better the time because that means it took you less time to complete it, which would mean that you would be coming in first. And so in this case, we need to first rank which ones would be first, second, third, and fourth and fifth just in case. And so if you have a look here, we can see that their complete number of seconds, full seconds were all the same, all at 58 seconds. So it really now depends on the milliseconds that were involved. And so you can see here that um, zero would be the first one because that means that's the shortest, the smallest number. So Adams actually came first. And so we can actually eliminate A, B, and C already. Then we look at the second digit, which all the other digits. So we've got one, two, two, three. So the one who has a one in there would be the next one. So second place would be Smith. So both of these are still okay. Then we look at the next one, which is the twos. Now both of them have two. So we've got to look at the next one, which is a zero. Now, just because this doesn't have anything, that's where we include it. So there's a zero here. And we've got to actually complete another zero just so that we can accurately compare them. So zero and eight and zero and zero, that means that Bartra actually came faster than what Cruz did. And then fifth would be Evans. And so first, second, third would be Adams, Smith and Bartra, which is why our answer is E. Okay, so that's question eight over the page, having a look at question nine now. 
So question nine is a measurement and data question and it's focusing on compass bearing problems, angles and directions. Now in the 2021 paper, there was a very similar question to this and that was question 33, focusing on geometric operations and angles as well. Now both questions share the same category and similar descriptions. Both questions require calculating angles. So being aware of how you calculate angles is quite an important point. So, let's have a look at question 9. It says, a boy is standing at point P. So, point P is indicated in the diagram below. And he is actually facing east. So, if we know that north is indicated up this way, um, east would be in another direction. So, I always, whenever I see compass directions, I always like to write north, east, south, west. Never eat soggy wheat bix or however you'd like to memorize it. And what we need to do is we know he's facing east. So we're going to just lightly indicate that he's actually facing east this way. Now the question is, it says he turns clockwise to face a house which is at point H. So point H is where the house is and we need to know if he's facing this way, which way is clockwise? So clockwise means he's facing, he's going in the direction of the clock, which is, if we notice a clock, it goes in this direction. And so from here, he's going all the way around this way to work that out. And so we need to work out what, where, um, how many degrees, what was the angle of his turn? And so if we have a look here, there are actually two ways that you can solve this. You can actually see this as working this out by quadrant and quadrants. So you can see here, this is 180 degrees, 290 degrees angles. And this is the third 90 degree angle, but the 60 that hasn't been used. So this would be 30 and you'd go 180 plus 30, which would be 210 degrees. Or what you can do is this. You can work out that 60 plus 90 degrees here, this whole section is 150 degrees and go 360 degrees minus 150 degrees to give us um, 210 degrees. So to work out the rest of this angle there. So there's actually two ways to work this out. And I think it's just what you can see the best is probably the best course of action to take. And so, um, but both answers would give us D to question nine. All right, let's have a look at the next part. So having a look at question 10 now. So question 10. All right, so having a look at question 10 now. Question 10 is a number arithmetic determining unknowns question. And a very similar question to this in the 2021 paper was um, question 22. So both questions involve very similar operations. So it was focusing on dealing with remainders. It focuses on multiplying with fractions and totally different parts. And so they are almost identical in the required calculations and knowledge. So let's have a go and answer these questions. So it says, question 10, Alex had $76. Now he spent some of it in a shop. Then he gave half of what he had left to Charlie. Charlie spent a quarter of what Alex gave him on lunch. And then Charlie spent $9. And we know that Charlie spent $9 on lunch. So the main question is, how much did Alex spend on the shop? So what I like to do best with these kinds of questions when it's involving like a bit of fractions and there's not exactly a number, I like to work it out through drawing a diagram. So I like to draw a little bit of a diagram. And so if we need to imagine that this bar will indicate how much money Alex had at the beginning, which was $76. Now we know that he spent some of it at the shop. We don't actually know. So we're just going to indicate it like this. We're going to just write shops. Now, what we know is that he gave off half of what he had left. So we're going to imagine that the rest of this is what he had left. So this section here is what he had left. Um, and he gave half of that to Charlie. So I'm going to just, we're going to halve that. And this was given to Charlie. So it's really important that you draw really good diagrams, boys and girls. And we know that Charlie then spent a quarter of what Alex gave him on lunch. And so we're going to split this further into quarters. So this was what he spent at lunchtime. Okay. And so 
if we have a look, we know that Charlie spent $9 on lunch. And the thing about fractions is that everything is about equal parts. And so that means each of the quarters is $9. So that means Alex actually gave Charlie $36. That means that Alex's other half here was also $36. And so if we actually total this up, 36 plus 36 is equal to $72. And so how much more does we need to add to get to $76? That means that the amount that Alex spent at the shops was only $4, which is why our answer to question 10 is A. So boys and girls, um, yeah, you can see the importance of drawing a really clear and accurate diagram and interpreting this information into a diagram is quite an important skill and it the only way we can get better at it is by practicing that. All right, let's move on. So having a look at question 11. So question 11, um, just to give us a little bit of an outlook, it is a space and geometry question and it focuses on shape problems, um, 3D shapes. Now, a very similar question to this in 2021 was um, question 29 and that was also a space and geometry, geometric op geometric operations, 3D shapes question. And both questions involved visualizing 3D shapes, although the 2022 question is harder as you have to visualize the entire 3D shape yourself based on the 2D views you are given here. Okay, so let's have a look. Question 11. It says a rectangular prism is made from identical small cubes. So each small cube is solid and looks like this from side, from the side. Okay, so each of these are all identical made of this. Now it says the three diagrams below show three different faces of the rectangular prism. So this is one face, this is another face, and this is another face. Now it says how many small cubes is the rectangular prism made from? Well, what we've got to do is we've actually got to use these different faces, one of them. So when we're looking at like a rectangular prism, they're all going to be some sort of rectangle. And um, because it's a 3D object to work out the volume of something, we have to go length times width times height to solve this. Okay. And so if we have a look at this, um, looking across, there's one, two, three, four, five, and looking up this way, there's one, two, three, four, five. So we can somewhat see that to be able to connect this to make a actual view, they would the length of this would have to somehow match the top of this as well. And so if we continue to draw it as accurately as we can, this is what it would look like. I'm just going to just reshape that just to fix it up a little bit. And that means that this here would be our side view that's coming across because three and three going across. So we're going to just draw that out. And just clear, clean that up a little bit. And we've got our complete shape. And so let's work out how many cubes are needed to make this shape. Well, this is where we use our volume. So we can see here the length was 1, 5, and the height was 3, and the width here was 2. So we'd have to go 5 times 2 times 3, which would equal to 30 cubes. And so that's why our answer to question 11 is B, 30. All right. Over the page, having a look at question 11. Question 11 does involve a bit of a little bit of trial and error um, just to see what works. But it is, once again, a statistics and data, data interpretation using tables question. Um, well, if we had to compare this to a 2021 20, question, there was a tables question in 2021, but the concepts and calculations involved were actually quite different. And so overall, there wasn't um, any similar 2021 questions very similar, but there were have been questions like this made by the tutors um, at um, at pre uni New College. So let's have a go um, and I will we'll explain to you how to work through this question. So this is what it says. Jennifer sells bunches of flowers here and she wants to make a picture graph to show the data within the table. And as you guys know, 
um, from this table here, we represent it into a picture graph or other forms of graphs um, to visually show this. And so it says she wants to use these pictures only in a picture graph. So there's either a whole flower and there's either half flowers, nothing like a quarter of a petal or anything like that. It's either whole or half. Now it says she will not draw any other fraction of a flower. Which of these keys can she use to represent the data correctly? So let's have a look. We've got these different amount so Monday was 24 flowers Tuesday was 28 and Wednesday was 36 and so we actually have to look at key X key Y and key Z and technically see if they're actually divisible um, to work this out so if a whole flower represents 4 which ones work so 24 divided by 4 works 28 divided by 4 works and 36 divided by 4 works so we don't even need any half flowers the whole flowers will completely work so key X works now, if we have a look at key Y, key Y says that one flower represents eight bunches. So 24 is divisible by eight, which works. So that works. 28 divided by eight does not quite work, but 24, and then if we halve that flower, we can draw a half flower, so that works. And then 36 divided by 8, we also need another half flower there because 32 and 4, 32 plus 4 is 36, so key Y works as well. Now, if we try key Z, which is one flower equals 12, 24 divided by 12 is divisible, so that works. 28 divided by 12 does not quite work, and half of 12 is 6, well, 24 plus 6 does not equal to 28 at all, so it can't be. Um, we already know that if it didn't work for Tuesday here, that means key Z won't work at all. We don't even need to try. And so that means our answer to question 12, the only two keys that will work to be able to draw this graph is B, key X or key Y only. And so that's our answer to question 12. Over the page, having a look at question 13. So question 13 is a number, number knowledge, mixed multiple operations kind of question. And in the 2021 paper, a very similar question to this was question 12, which was focused also on number knowledge and more focused on division as well. And so although the answers are in different forms and ask for somewhat different things, the basis of both questions is essentially the same. They require you guys to know your number knowledge related to multiplication, division, and especially your divisibility rules as well, okay? And how numbers work. So it's a lot of number theory involved. So why don't we have a try doing question 13? So question 13 says this. Three different numbers are chosen from the numbers 3, 5, 6, and 8. They are then added together. So which one of these statements is or are correct? Number one, the total cannot be a multiple of 8. Number two, the total can be a multiple of 3. Number three, the total is always odd. So we need to, we need to understand the scenario. There are four digits and we need to make them into different three digit numbers because there's three different numbers are chosen from here okay so we need to make them into three different three digit numbers okay and so once we add up all these digits together um, that we create these numbers together um, then we need to see which of these statements are correct or not okay and so let's have a look at each one so what you can do, boys and girls, is you can actually list out all the digits. You can list out all the different potential numbers you can make, which could be 356, 358, 368, 365, 386, 385, and you can constantly do it. And what you'll notice is that... Um, for each one, there's always going to be six. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six. The next one would be five, three, six, five, three, eight, five, six, eight, five, six, three, five, eight, three, and five, eight, six. So that's your next set. And you can keep going on and on until you list all those numbers. But then you'd have to try out each one to see if it makes sense, which takes a bit of a time. 
But if you know your knowledge of numbers and how you can test these numbers using these digits, then it's a lot quicker. So if we have a look at number one, the total cannot be a multiple of eight. So that means that, um, and we need to see if that works or not. So it says cannot be a multiple. So that means it can't be part of the eight times tables. Now that is incorrect, okay? Because if you list out the eight times tables, you've got eight, you've got 16, you've got um, 24, you've got 32, 40, and so forth. Now, we're going to be focusing on the first few numbers, and just by looking at this number here, 5 plus 8 plus 3, that's already a multiple of 8, because that equals to 16, and so we know that 1 does not make sense. That's not correct, because it can be a multiple of 8. And so, number 1 doesn't work. Number 2, the total can be a multiple of 3. Now, I'm going to tell you that this doesn't work immediately as well, and I'll tell you why. When you're looking at the divisibility rule for 3, of 3, divisibility rule, ability rule of 3, you need to know that um, the total sum... So the sum of the digits has to be a part of um, the so total sum of the digits has to be a part of the three times tables. Okay, and so if you have a look here, three plus six, these are already multiples of three and three plus six is nine as well. But 5 and 8 from the beginning were never multiples of 3. And so any time, and you need three numbers to make a complete number. And even if you have 3 and 6 together, any time you add an 8 or a 5, it will never equal to a number that's a part of the 3 times tables. If you add, and if you think about it, 5 plus 8, that doesn't even equal to a digit of 3 because 5 plus 8 is... Um, 13 and that's not divisible and so that doesn't work as well and so that means that it can never be a multiple of three so that's why number two is doesn't make sense and number three um, the total is always odd well this cannot be the case as well because we've got some even numbers here and some odd numbers and the way that number the numbers work is that um, even if you have two even numbers and then an odd number, that works. But then sometimes when you've got two odd numbers and an even number, that will still equal to an even number as well. Because the idea about odd and even is when um, you've got that extra pair. Where your numbers, when they're split, has that extra lone one by itself. And so that means that all three statements don't work. And so our answer to question 13 is A none of them. So boys and girls, it's really important that you know exactly what it means for your numbers to be odd, what it means, means to be for your numbers to be even, um, and your divisibility rules as well. All right, let's have a look at question 14. So question 14 is a measurement and data question focusing on geometric geometric operations and to do with area. Now in 2021, um, question number 30 was a very similar question to this where it focused on measurement and data geometric op operations focusing on area where both questions are fairly similar area questions. However, the 2021 one was actually more difficult and more involved as you're also required to calculate lengths before finding the area altogether. Okay, and so why don't we try answering this question um, and see. So question 14, it says the diagram shows a triangle inside a rectangle. So you can see a rectangle and a triangle within there. Now it says the area shaded gray is 84 centimeters squared. So that's what you know. Now the question is, what is the area of the triangle? Well, the key thing here is boys and girls, you already know what this is. And just by give, being given the measurements of this whole rectangle, including this part of the triangle, you can actually subtract that area here with the shaded area to work out what that leftover area part is. And so the area of the rectangle would be 11 times 12, which is 132 centimeters squared. And we know that the shaded area is 84, so we need to go 132 centimeters squared minus 84 centimeters squared, which equals to 48 
centimeters squared. So therefore, our answer to question 14 is D, 48 centimeters squared. All right, so that's how we work out question 14. Okay, let's have a look at over to the next page, question 15. So question 15 is a measurement and data, data interpretation and focusing on diagrams question. Um, and a very similar question to this was question um, 32 in the 2021 paper, which focused also, which focused on number and algebra, arithmetic operations, and determining unknowns. And so both questions involved reading measurements from different diagrams and then performing arithmetic operations to find that answer. So let's have a look at question 15. This is what it says. Sojong has been recording rainfall for the last five weeks by collecting it in a container. Now the container was empty at the start of week one. So keynote start. Now Sojong um, recorded the amount of rain in the container at the end of each week. No water was lost during the five weeks. And the diagram show what he recorded. So you can see end of week one, end of week two, end of week three, end of week four, and the end of week five, um, how much rain was collected. Now, key thing here is that at the end, this shows us the end of these progressive weeks, okay? But we need to remember that at the start of week one, the container was empty. So let's for now write down what we see. So at the end of week one, the amount of rainwater collected was 60 mils. Because if you count the range, it goes up by 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. And at the end of week two, that was 100 mils. At the end of week three was 180 mils. At the end of week four was 220 mils. And at the end of week five was 360 mils. Now, if we have a look, it increases by um, 40 mils. This increases by 80 mils. Plus, plus. This one here increases by 40 mils as well. And this one here increased by 140 mils. Now, the main question here is this. During which two weeks was there exactly the same amount of rainfall? And so you can see from here, there are two different amount, two different parts that increase by 40 mils each. It's not week one or week three. It's actually, remember, this is the end of week one. So during this time to this time, it's actually week two and between week three and week four this is actually week threes or week fours session as well okay so during from the end of week one the beginning of week two during and by the end of week two this is how much it increased by and so week two and week four our answer to question 15 is d week two and week four Okay, so that's question 15. Having a look now at question 16. Now, question 16 was a space and geometry shape problems focusing on symmetry kind of question. And um, a very similar question to this was question 18 in the 2021 paper, which was also focusing on shape and geometry, but looking at geometric operations and focusing on 2D shapes. Now, although question the 2021 question 18 question isn't really related to symmetry it was the closest match to 2022 question 16 as both deal with analyzing 2d shapes and their properties so let's have a look question 16 it says Brody is thinking of a quadrilateral now the quadrilateral has and these are the three things it has no parallel sides so that means that there's no sides that are going in that same directions equal to each other and it has two sides of five centimeters and two sides of eight centimeters. And there is only exactly one right angle. So it says, how many lines of symmetry does Brody's quadrilateral have? Well, as soon as we see the word quadrilateral, boys and girls, we think of a four-sided shape. Okay? And so we need to think about what kind of quadrilateral this is. So... Um, if we think about a square that has parallel sides, so it can't be square. If we think about a rectangle that has parallel sides as well. If we think about a parallelogram that also has a parallel sides as well as a rhombus also has a 
um, parallel sides. So the only thing we can think of is essentially a kite. And because a kite in the sense has two sides that are the same and the other two sides that are the same as well. And so if we drew this, this is what it looks like. So we've drawn in the um, little right angle and there are no parallel sides within here. And these two sides would be the same of five centimeters and five centimeters. And these two sides would be the same of eight centimeters and eight centimeters. And so how many lines of symmetry does this quadrilateral have? Well, if we drew this directly through this line here, we would see that there is one line of symmetry, which is why our answer to question 16 is B1. All right, let's have a look at question 17. So question 17 says this. Well, a question 17 is a number, an arithmetic operations type question, and it focuses on um, fractions. Now, in the 2021 paper, question 17 as well was a very similar question, which was focusing on number and algebra, arithmetic operations, and determining unknowns. Now, both questions require finding a final amount after dealing with fraction calculations. However, the 2021 question 17 requires more algebra, whereas the 2022 question 17 sticks more to numbers. So let's have a go working through this. So question 17 says this, a gardener has a box of bulbs to plant in a garden. Now the garden has three sections. She plants one half of the bulbs in the first section. She plants three quarters of the remaining bulbs in the second section. And she has six bulbs left, which she plants in the third section. How many bulbs were there in the box at the start? So why don't we draw a diagram to really help us build on this idea? So we know that she's building, she's planting the bulbs in um, in a garden and this garden has three sections so we're going to draw section one section two and section three all here now we know that she plants half the bulbs in the first section so we're just even like within here this is the section one but we're going to just say she plants half of those bulbs in here so that's half and then she plants three quarters of the remaining bulbs in this section. So we know we're going to actually work out what three quarters of a half is because she had half left. And so we know that of means times. So we go three quarters times a half, which is equal to three eighths. So that means three eighths were planted in here. And then we know that she had six bulbs left. So she plants six bulbs um, within here. So the question is how many bulbs were in the box at the start? Well, let's work out, let's first work out um, an equivalent fraction to a half, which is an eight. So we need to multiply by four. And the same thing here, multiply this by four. So one times four is four. So four eighths plus three eighths is equal to seven eighths altogether. So that means the remaining that she had six bulbs was equal to one eighth. So if we know that 1 eighth is equal to 6 bulbs, how much was 8 eighths? So we go 6 times 8, which is equal to 48 bulbs. So to work that out, we had to go 6 times 8. And so that's why our answer to question 17 was E48. All right, so that's question 17. Over the page to the next part, which was question 18. Question 18 is a space and geometry shape problems focusing on nets question. Now in 2021, there was a very similar question to this, which was question 35, which focused on space and geometry shape problems and focusing on visualizing space questions, okay? Now, although the questions are not identical, they require similar concepts and abilities in visualization. So um, question 18, it's all about visualizing and reasoning as to why it's come to that question. OK, so having a look, it says a cube has been planted around one vertex as shown. One vertex as shown. And it says which of the following diagrams could be a net for this cube. And so as you can see here. Um, we need to find out which of the followings could be a net for that cube. So we've got diagram one 
And so you can see here, if you actually fold these two together, they would come together to one point. And if you actually folded this down, that would also come together. So diagram one works. That works. Diagram two does not work because if you have a look and fold it through, the corners don't match because they're not in the same direction as well here. And so we know that diagram two doesn't work. And diagram three, um, it looks like it's about to work because they're all in the same direction. Um, and as you're imagining how they're folded, these two match up, but this final one does not match up. And so diagram three does not work as well. And so our answer to question 18 is A, diagram one only. All right, so that's our answer to question 18. Having a look at question 19 over the page. So question 19 is a probability number problems um, question. And in 2021, um, a very similar question to this was question seven, where both questions are almost identical questions using three different colored objects and simple calculations to deduce probability. And so why don't we try answering this question? So question 19 says, a bag contains three colors of discs. We've got red, blue, and yellow. Now it says there are, a, there are an equal number of red discs and blue discs. There are twice as many blue discs as yellow discs. One disc is selected without looking. Now, what is the probability of selecting a blue disc? So there's actually quite a lot happening. Well, first of all, we know that there are an equal, there are three different colors, red, blue, yellow. There are twice as many blue discs as yellow discs. So that means that if yellow discs, there was one triangle worth, that means blue discs, there are two triangles worth. And that means that in the blue discs, there are two triangles worth. And that means that's equal to the red discs, which is also two triangles worth as well then. And so... Um, what is the probability of selecting a blue disc? Well, we can see here from the red, yellow, and blue, there are five different amounts. And to select a blue disc, it would, two of them would be within there. And so our answer would be D, two fits. I mean, what you can do is you can also write this as a um, bit of a ratios type question because for one part yellow, there are two parts blue and there are two parts red because there's this equal amount. And so that's another way of representing your information. And so I answered question 19 is D. Having a look at question 20 over the page. Question 20 is a number um, arithmetic problem operations money type question. And in the 2021 paper, a very similar question to this was question 20 as well, which was a number problems mixed multiple operations kind of questions where both questions deal with money and finding the price of different items slash quantities and involve some sort of algebra as well. So why don't we have a look and answer question 20. It says here is part of a menu from a cafe. The prices have been torn off. So you can see here, unfortunately, it's been all torn off, but we know that in the menu, there are only three things. And it says a burger and a drink require cost $6 in total. Chips and a drink cost $3.75 in total. A burger, chips and drink cost $8.50 in total. How much does a burger and chips cost in total only? So what we're going to do is this, we're going to write these down into a bit of a number sentence. Yes, they're somewhat written into a number sentence, but it's easier when we actually can see the plus and the minuses involved. So let's sol solve through this. So we know that burger, one burger plus a drink is equal to six dollars. Now we know that chips and a drink is equal to three dollars and seventy five cents. And what we know next is that the burger plus the chips and a drink is equal to $8.50. And the main question is how much does a burger and chips cost in total? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to use this piece of information to help us work out what everything else equals to. So what we're going to do is we can work out exactly how much um, the burger costs 
or actually what we're going to do first is this we're going to actually add these two up together because the burger plus drink plus chips and drink would be a burger chips and two drinks would equal two all together if we add them up is equal to nine dollars and 75 cents and that means that a burger plus chips plus um a drink so if we minus those two together because remember these two now equals to two drinks and this would have one this has an extra drink so then we can work out the price of one drink and so if we do this we go nine dollars and seventy five cents minus eight dollars and fifty cents is equal to one dollar twenty five so now we know that one drink is equal to one dollar twenty five now to just work out what the burgers and chips is to be able to work that out we would go eight dollars fifty minus one dollar twenty five which is equal to seven dollars and twenty five cents and so that's why our answer to question twenty is c and boys and girls it like there's many ways of working it out i mean you can work it out like that um you can also work it out where you're subtracting this with this to work out how much the burger costs or and then you can subtract this with this to work out how much the chips cost and add them up together like we say there are so many different ways to work this out there isn't just one way but you have to be able to see it and play around and with these different number sentences to be able to get to that answer so um just remember that all right, having a look at question 21. So question 21 is a measurement and data units and measurement measurement um, focusing on time kind of question. And um, a very similar question to this in the 2021 paper was question 13, which was also a measurement and data units and measurement time kind of question, where although ultimately the two questions require you to do different calculations, they are based on the same similar concepts of time. Okay, so why don't we have a look and try and solve through this? So question 21 goes like this. It says Jason's clock was working normally until 7.05 a.m. Okay, so until 7.05, it was still 7.05. But at 7.05 a.m., he dropped the clock. And for the rest of the day, the clock's hands turned twice as fast as normal. And so at 3.25 p.m. that day, what time did the clock show? So three, so three. The key thing here, boys and girls, because this already sounds like quite a tricky question when you're faced with it the first time, but the key information we're given here is that the clock's hands turned twice as fast as normal. That means it was, it went by twice as quickly. And so what we need to do is this. We know that at 7.05, it was normal, and then he dropped it at that time and started going a lot quicker. But if we know that the time was 3.25 p.m., that's an 8 hour and 20 minutes um, time that's passed. Now, technically, because it went by twice as fast, we're going to actually add on the watch, it's going to go by two times as quickly. So we're going to actually add another eight hours and 20 minutes, which will leave us at 11.45 p.m., which is why our answer is E. Okay, so yes, it sounds complicated, but the actual method of it is actually not as complicated as you think it might be. And so our answer to question 21 is E, um, 11.45. Right, over on to the next question, question 22. So question 22 is a number and algebra, algebra determining unknowns question. And in the 2021 paper, um, a similar question to this was question 20, which focused on number, number problems, which was mixed multiple operations kind of question. And so having a look um having a look at this both questions involved money and similar algebraic calculations or equations to find the final solution so let's have a look question 22 i have an equal number of one dollar and two dollar coins now the total value of my coins is 54 dollars now one dollar co coins weigh nine grams and two dollar coins weigh seven grams and the question is what is the total weight of all my coins okay and so what we've got to do is this we're going to write try and put these into number sentences to be able to help us work this out so we don't know how much but a certain number there are a certain number of one dollar coins and that same amount is also there's actually that same amount for two dollar coins as well 
Now, it says the total value of my coins is $54. So even though they have the same amount, um, the value of them are quite different because we know that um, $2 are two times are two times more in value than one dollar coin so technically this is what it means triangle plus triangle triangle would equal to 54 dollars and by me this we mean this is the one dollar coin values and these are the two dollar coin values so what we need to do is we go 54 divided by 3 because into three parts would be 18 so each one is 18 18 18 so there are 18 one dollar coins and there are actually 18 two dollar coins even though the value of this is 36 dollars and so now that we know that there are 18 of each and by this we don't mean 18 dollars we mean 18 um we can work out how much the total weight of the coins are so we go 18 times 9 which is 162 grams and we go 18 times 7, which is equal to 126 grams. So 162 grams plus 126 grams gives us 288 grams altogether, which is why our answer is B, 288. And so our answer to question 22 is B. Having a look now onto the next question, question 23. Question 23 is a measurement and data arithmetic operations focusing on distance kind of question. Um, in the 2021 paper, a very similar question to this was question 25, which was a measurement and data number problems focusing on distance kind of question. So both questions deal with measurement and distance. However, the 2022 question is very simple with one simple subtraction required, whereas the 2021 question involves multiple steps. Okay, and so let's have a look at question 23. This is what it says. Two statues are 8 kilometers and 23 meters apart. And so if you want to draw this, we've got statue A and statue B. And they are 8 kilometers and 23 meters apart, which is actually 8,023 meters. Now it says a map maker incorrectly labels the distance between the statues on the map and wrote down the distance to be 23 kilometers and 8 meters, which is actually 23,000 and 8 meters. And so the question is what is the difference between the correct and incorrect distances? Or well, difference, we know the number operation we have to do is minus. So we actually have to go 23,008 minus 8. 1023. So we subtract 8 take away 3 is 5. 0 take away 2 we can't do, so we borrow 9 and 10. 10 take away 2 is 8. 9 take away 0 is 9. 2 take away 8 we can't do, so we borrow 12 take away 8 is 4. 1 take away nothing is 1. So our answer is 14,985 meters, which is 14 kilometers, and 985 meters, which is why our answer is B 14 kilometers and 985 meters. Okay, so making sure you just know how to convert between um, kilometers and meters and how they work together. And then also being able to do your subtraction correctly. That's an important point as well. And just with these ones, it's a matter of making sure you're not making silly mistakes when you're solving them. All right, having a look over to the next question, question 24. So question 24 is a measurement and data geometric operations kind of question focusing on area. And a very similar question to this was question 30 in the 2021 paper, which was a measurement and data geometric operations area question, where both questions involve calculating overlapping shading areas with multiple steps required to reach that final answer. Okay, so let's have a look. This is what it says. Jetta draws a map of an island showing areas where there are only hills, only bush or both. Now these three areas cover the whole island. So you can see here a diagram. This is the part where there's bush only, no hills. This has hills and bush and this section here is hills only. Now it says the total area of the island is 164 kilometers. So if we actually wrote this, this whole thing is 164 
kilometers squared. Now it says the total area where there are hills is 132 kilometers. The total area where there is bush is 80 kilometers. What is the area of the island? Ha which what area of the island has both hills and bush? Well, boys and girls, what you've got to do is this. You've actually got to understand that key thing here is that the there's a bit of a play on words here because it says it says where there are hills. So there isn't this. They're not just talking about the section with the hills only. It's also talking about the part where there are hills and bush as well. And the same thing here. The total area where there is bush. It's not just this section here for bush. It's also talking about this section that's mixed up as well. And so the question is, what area of the island has both hills and bush? So that section, that center section in particular. Well, what you've got to do is you've got to add these two up. So 132 plus 80 gives you 212 kilometers squared. And then what you've got to do is you've got to go 212 minus 164, which is equal to 48 kilometers squared, which is why our answer is C, 48 kilometers squared. Okay, so just being careful with the language that they use because where there are hills, you might be thinking, okay, it must be just this section here, but they're also including that overlapping section as well, anywhere that has hills. Okay, so just being really careful with that. All right, over on to the next question, question 25. Question 25 is a number, number knowledge question focusing on rates. And um, a very similar question to this was question 26, which was also a number, number problems determining unknowns question. Um, yeah, so although the categorizations are different, the questions ask for almost identical calculations, requiring students to recognize that the events will occur simultaneously at time intervals defined by their lowest common multiples, okay? So why don't we have a look? Question 25. So it says a display has three lights that flash at different intervals. It says the red light flashes every two minutes, the green light flashes every three minutes, and the blue light flashes every five minutes. Now it says the lights all flash together at 7 a.m. How many times between 7.01 a.m. and 9.59 a.m. the same morning do the green and the blue lights flash together without the red light also flashing? So it can never be a time when they're all together. So this is a rates question or ratios question. And you have to put red and we're comparing it to green and we're comparing that to blue. So first of all, between 7.01 a.m. to 9.59 a.m. there are 2 hours and 58 minutes between that, which is also 178 minutes. Now, what we know is this, for the red light, there are, it flashes every two minutes, the green light flashes every three minutes, and the blue light flashes every five minutes. Now, one thing you need to remember is that we need to think about something called LCM. LCM, which is looking at lowest common multiple. And so as I was ex before we went through this question, I was explaining that um, the time intervals was focused on lowest common multiples, which we were solving. And so um, the lowest common multiple between 3 and 5, so the LCM of 3 and 5 was 15. And so every 15 minutes, we'd have to find that um, it would go off. But then think about it, at 30 minutes, that's a multiple of two. So technically, it can't be after every, it's got to be at every odd kind of sequence. So 15 minutes, and then the next 15 minutes, it can't be because that's 30 minutes later, which would match with the red. So it can't be that one. And then it's got to be 45 minutes. So that's one thing you got to remember. So it would go off at 15 minutes. So if we actually worked out the multiple, intervals that's 15 minutes 30 minutes 45 minutes and then it would be 75 minutes 100 minutes continuing on to 100 and oh sorry 75 minutes 100 minutes and then it would continue on to 
75 or oh, plus 15, which would be 90 minutes. Apologies, boys and girls. So 90 minutes plus another 15 is 105 minutes. And then 100 and plus 15 again, that's 120 minutes. Plus 15 is 135, all the way up to 178 minutes. So we're just listing all those possibilities down. So that's 150 minutes, the next one. And then plus 15 as well, so that's 165 minutes. Plus another 15, which doesn't work. And so if we have a look, um, how many times does it flash between these times? Well, we've got to first cross out the ones that will not work, which is between, which is 30. Anything with a multiple that's divisible by 2 does not work. And so if we count them, we've got 1, 2, um, 3, because we've missed out that 60 between there, 4, 5, Six, that's six times between these two um, times in the morning. And so our answer to question 25 is A, six times. Okay, having a look at question 26. So question 26 says this, three planks of wood have all the same length. Now they are placed next to each other as shown. Okay, and so you can see here the diagram and what is the length of one plank of wood. Now, before we continue to solve it, boys and girls, this kind of question is a measurement and data geometric operations focusing on lengths kind of question. And a very similar question to this in the 2021 paper was question 25, which focused on measurement and data, number problems, distance kind of questions. Both questions require almost identical calculations, so finding the length slash distance of gaps between two or more points. However, the 2021 question requires the additional steps of students needing to first draw out the diagram. Okay, so let's have a look. We've already been given the diagram, but the diagram can make it a bit tricky when you're starting to observe this. So we can see that the whole, all three planks of wood, although it may not look like it in the diagram because of how it's drawn, they're actually all the same in terms of length. But we can't, like we're trying to find out what the length of one plank of wood is. And that might prove to be a bit tricky when you first see it. So what I'm going to first tell you is this. Within 135 centimeters, there are actually three sections. There's section A, which is this part here. There is section B, which is here. And there is a section C, which is this section here. Now, all of these sections, A plus B plus C is equal to 135 centimeters. Okay? And so, now that we notice that, now we can see that section A is actually a complete plank of wood, which is X. We're going to name this as X because we don't actually know what it's equal to. Now, if we notice here, within the second, like the second plank of wood that is on top, we find out that a majority of it is actually 40 centimeters, as you can see here. And then it's got that extra part here. Now we don't know what that is, but technically, it would be X take away 40 to work out what this is because we don't actually know that amount either. So this here is actually X take away 40. And within X take away 40, um, we've got this section here that's five centimeters as well. And so what we've got to do is we've got to actually replace all of these things, A plus B plus C to equal to um, 135. And so what we know is this, we've got X, which is all of section A, plus section B, which is X minus 40. And then we've got section C, which is technically going to be X minus 5, because all of this here is going to be X minus 5, because that five section is in part of B. So it's gonna be plus X minus five, and the whole thing is 135 centimeters. And we've got to slowly work through it. So once again, collecting like terms, so we've got X, X, and X. So that's going to be three X minus, because 40 minus five is minus 45, is equal to 135 centimeters. Three X is equal to 100 and, 
135. So 135 plus 45, which is 180 centimeters, because we moved that to the other side. That means x is equal to 60 centimeters. So that means that one of these planks of wood is equal to c, 60 centimeters. And if we didn't know the algebra of boys and girls um, by visually seeing it, we could have done um, guess and check to work this out. Trial and error of each of these questions as well. All right, having a look over to the next page, which is question 27 over here. Question 27 is a space and geometry, geometric operations type question, um, focusing on symmetry. And this is a very similar to question 23 of the 2021 MR paper, which focuses on patterns in algebra, number patterns, number sequences. Um, but there were not really any similar questions to question to the 2022 question 27. Pay, um, question 27 with the 2021 question 23 being a bit of a stretch but both deal with shading in squares in a grid like shape to continue or reflect a pattern however the 2022 question is far more focused on symmetry which the 2021 question does not touch on touch on but it does focus on number patterns and being exposed to how we can look at number patterns um, and like the shading of squares to create that are that lean into other concepts like symmetry patterns and so forth so having a look at question 27 it says allison shaded three small squares in the grid below so three small squares now it says she wants to shade extra squares to make a pattern with exactly four lines of symmetry so if we think about it the four lines of symmetry would be one going down directly like this another one going across like this a third one going down diagonally like that and a fourth one going diagonally across like this as shown now it says what is the smallest number of extra squares she needs to shade well if we look at it diagonally at a time um, going across vertically diagonally we'd have to shade this one here and we'd have to shade this one here as well as this one here and then if we, have to ha if we had to do it horizontally, we'd have to shade this one here and this one over here. And diagonally would be a bit of a different story because it'd have to go, it have to be in both areas. So this one would have to be shaded um, as well as the other side has to be shaded as well. So depending on which side you're diagonally um, making it symmetrical, you would have to, you would still have quite a few squares that you'd have to color in. And so once you total that, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's the smallest number of extra squares that are needed to be shaded. So our answer to question 27 is D9. All right, so that's question 27. Over on to question 28. So question 28 is a number and algebra um, algebra determining unknowns question and a very similar question to this is question 17 of the 2021 paper where it is also a number algebra arithmetic operations determining unknowns question and so it says although the calculations require very um, required vary both questions require a similar understanding of algebra to find the solution and as this is indicated by their different descriptions the 2021 question 17 was more focused on applying arithmetic operations in algebraic equations whereas this question was a bit more focused on the algebra itself and required more mathematical thinking so let's have a look at this question together so question 28 it says Mirinda sold drinks at the class barbecue now the drinks were orange or lemon now she sold 33 drinks altogether which of the statements cannot be um, correct well it says for question number one she sold 10 more orange drinks than lemon drinks well I'm going to tell you now that this is not possible and the reason why is that if you actually like subtracted out the 10 uh, minus that 10 from there that's 23 you can't actually divide that by two afterwards like the algebra behind this 
doesn't actually work, okay? Because if you go 33, take away 10, that's 23 divided by 2. That's not going to give you a whole number. It's going to be like a 0.5 answer. And so you know that it can't be, um, it can't be, it's not possible. And you can't have half a drink in this case here. And number two, she sold twice as many orange drinks as lemon drinks. Now that is possible because it's divisible by three. Because if you think about it, you would go um, 33 divided by three, which is 11. And so she can have 22 orange drinks and 11 lemon drinks. That would be 33. So that's possible. And number three, she sold five more lemon drinks than orange drinks. Well, 33 take away five. What does that equal to? So if we minus the five out of there, that would give us 28. And then you sub divide that by two, which is equal to 14 which works. And so that's possible as well. And so that means our answer to which one cannot be correct. It is statement one only. Statement one is the only one that's not possible. And so our answer to question 28 is A. All right, having a look at question 29. So question 29 is a um, measurement and data geometric operations area question and a very similar question to this was question 30 in the 2021 paper which is also focusing on measurement and data geometric operations area questions where both questions involve completing multiple steps to complete to determine the area of different shapes however 2022 this question here um, it requires a bit more mathematical thinking and shape visualization having to recognize that the shape of the triple may require manipulation as well. So having a look at question 29, it says this shape is a trapezium with two right angles. So one right angle here and another right angle here. And it says Anna has a square piece of paper with a side length of 24 centimeters. So if we actually drew a square sheet of paper, what we're saying is each side is 24 centimeters. Now the question is, what is the greatest possible number of trapeziums Anna can cut out from this card? Well, you can see here that the trapezium is not an equal shape, but what we can do is we can try drawing out two trapeziums here um, to fill in to make a like a full rectangle, and it might, and then it will be a lot easier to solve. So there would be eight centimeters by three centimeters and so if we're stacking this one on top there's actually going to be three going across so if we actually drew this eight eight so it would go in like this and then the amount of times it'd go in here would be 24 divided by three which is equal to eight so it'd go in eight times so that's one 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 one, one, two, there, that many times within as well. So if we actually drew that out, this is what it would probably look like. And within here, we would have two trapeziums within each. And so if we counted that, would be there would be um, 48 because we would do eight times three, which is 24, and then times that by two because there are two trapeziums in the rectangle, which would be 48. And so our answer to question 29 is D48. Okay, so having a look at question 30 now. Question 30 is a patterns and algebra number patterns number sequences question. And a very similar question to, to this to in the 2021 paper was question 2, which was a patterns and algebra number patterns number sequences questions. Now both questions involve students finding numbers in a given number sentence. Um, the level of difficulty varies since question 30, which is the 2022 question, gives direct rules on how the number sequence functions. However, um, in the 2021 paper, it requires students to not only find the missing number, but also determine the pattern itself beforehand. So why don't we have a go looking at question 30. So question 30 says this, Jamal makes a number sequence. He chooses the first number in the sequence. Then he follow these two rules, one after the other repeatedly, subtract 100 to get the next number in the sequence, add 10 to get the next number in the sequence. So the sixth number in the sequence is 8,451. What is the first number in Jamal sequence. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, 
6, we know that the 6 number was 8,451 and we want to work out what the previous number is. But we know that the rule, the number sequence has two rules. The first one is minus 100 and the next one is to plus 10. Next one, minus 100 and then plus 10 then minus 100. So technically, to be able to get to the first number, we actually have to work backwards and do the opposite of what the rule says. So if we minus 100 here, to get the number before, we would probably have to plus 100. Then add 10, minus 10, 8,541, minus 100, or plus 100, so it would be 8,641, plus 10, we have to minus 10, 8,631, and then we have to add 100, so it would be 8,731. And so our answer to question 30 is E, that's our first number in Jamal sequence. Alright, having a look down at question 31. So question 31 is a measurement and data compass bearing problems, angle directions question. Um, in the 2021 paper, question 8 was a very similar question to this, which was a space and geometry compass bearing problem focusing on angles and directions as well. Now, both questions are similar since they require students' knowledge in compass bearings and directions. Um, the 2022 question, however, requires students to not only imagine the di angles and directions since no diagram is given, but also to understand how how angles can be converted into fractions. So let's have a go. So question 31, it says a robot is facing southeast, it makes 58 quarter turns clockwise then 93 quarter turns anti-clockwise, in which direction is the robot now facing? Okay, so currently what we're going to do is we're going to draw out our compass directions. So we'll probably draw this out as accurately as possible. So we've got our north, south, east, west. Never eat soggy wheat pix and we know that it's facing southeast at the moment. So this is direct the direction that the robot is facing from the center over here, southeast. Now we know that clockwise is going this way, anti-clockwise is going the other way. Now what we need to know is that it makes 58 quarter turns. So quarter turns is a 90 degree turn from a whole turn is something that's a whole revolution but a quarter turn is only 90 degrees now it makes 58 of these quarter turns and so what we need to work out is we actually need to go 58 divided by 4 to see out how many revolutions it actually makes so it goes in 1 subtract 1 bring down the 8 4 and then 16 subtract 2 so it makes 14 full revolutions so 14 full revolutions around and then it has two more quarter turns so one quarter turn to there and then and then another quarter turn to there okay and so now it is facing northwest after 58 quarter turns so this is the first round after 58 quarter turns then it makes 93 quarter turns anti-clockwise so it goes the other way around and so what we need to do is we need to go 93 divided by 4 so it goes in 2 times 8 subtract 1 bring down the 3 goes in 3 times 12 subtract is 1 so it makes 23 full turns anti-clockwise so going um, around so anti-clockwise is going the other way. And so it goes around 93 full turns from the northwest um, position. And then it does two, one more quarter turn. So one more quarter turn would mean it's going this way now. And so our last direction, so this is after 93 quarter turns anti-clockwise. Our answer is southwest. And so our answer to question 31 is E, Southwest. All right, so that is question 31. Over on to the next page, having a look at question 32. Question 32 is a geometric operations measurement and data perimeter question. A very similar question to this in the 2021 paper was question 11, which was a 
geo measurement and data geometric operations perimeter question. Both question 11 and 32 are similar in that they both ask about perimeter. However, a more similar question to question 32 would be 16 in the sample paper since both have the same format and very similar shapes. So let's answer through question 32. So it says this shape is made from rectangles. Now it says what is the perimeter of this shape? Okay, so this shape is made from rectangles. You can see the many various rectangles that you can create from here as well. And so we want to find out what the perimeter of this shape is. And so you can see here that 16 is across here. And if you have a look, this is 14, but you've got to add that actual one. So that's actually 15 across this way. And so if we actually account for all of these, um, going across above, including this one, this and this, that's 16 included. So that's 16 centimeters. And then this, this, that's 15 centimeters above here. And then we just need to see what more we need to add. To make the 15 centimeters down below, we've got this one here, this amount, this amount, this amount. So that's 15, 15. And then we've got that to add the extra three centimeters here and the three centimeters here as well. And so if we actually add these up together, we would have to go 15 plus 15 plus 16 plus 16 plus that extra six, which will give us E 68 centimeters. So if we write that out, we have to go, we've extended everything out to see that 15 centimeters plus 15 centimeters, both the bottom measurements and the vertical measurements, which was 16 centimeters plus 16 centimeters. And then plusing those extra three centimeters and three centimeters gives us E 68 centimeters. And so that's why our answer to question 32 is E 68 centimeters. All right, so that's question 32. Over the page, having a look at question 33. Question 33 is a num number, number problems, mixed multiple, multiple operations questions. And a very similar question to this in the question in the 2021 paper was question 15, which was a number, number, knowledge, subtraction question. Question 33 is a unique question involving place value and number manipulation, mainly reversing digits. However, question 15 vaguely is similar to question 33 since they involve minimal knowledge in place value and number positions. So let's have a look. Question 33. Timothy writes down the number 24. He reverses the digits to make the number 42. He then works out that 42 is 18 more than his starting number, 24. Nicola writes down a whole number between 0 and 99. So it could be any whole number between there. Now it says she also reverses the digits of her number. She finds that this number is a number that is 72 more than her starting number. So what was the last digit in Nicole's starting number? So this one can be that can be a bit tricky to understand at first but they've given you a bit of a little rundown at the beginning just to give you a bit of better bit of a better idea of how you'd solve this and so we know that originally the number was 24 and he reverses the digits changes the place value to 42 and what we find out is that 42 take away 24 gives us a difference of 18. Now he writes down a whole number between 10 and 99 and then reverses those numbers. So if we actually do that and then reverses it like this and finds out that a number that is 72 more than the starting number. So technically the difference between these, if you subtract it, was 72. And so if we have a look, what was the last digit of Nicole's starting number? Our answer, we'd have to try out each of these, but we could see that it'd have to have a you'd have to have a difference of of two, okay? She finds that this number, um, this makes a number that is 72 more than her starting number. So this is the difference that it's made. And so what you've got to do is that it's got to be, um, like we have to find out what that number is. And so if we find out that the last digit is a nine of her starting number, we'd work out that, um, that we'd get 72 overall, okay? Because, and I'll show you here. So if we have a look, nine and one, smaller number. If we reverse it, it becomes 91. 
And when we actually swap it around, we go 91 take away 19, finds us our difference of 72 altogether. So it's a bit of a, um, it, it's really focusing on place value as well because you'd have to do a bit of borrowing and knowing the numbers would have to be, it'd be a two digit number between 10 and 99 to help us solve it. And so we'd get our answer to question 33 as E. All right, over to the next page, page 34. Now question 34, is a space and geometry geometric operation 3D shapes question and question um, another question that's very similar to this question is question 29 which is a space and geometry shape problems 3D shape um, 3D shapes question now the 2021 question and the 2022 question both involve spatial visualization of an object and finding the number of cubes within that object based on the hypothesized situation um, this question could be considered a bit more of a difficult version of 29 since it involves further imagination and visualization to the given object without any clear diagrams to actually help you. Like you're given the information, but it really does involve a lot of um, self-visualization to get to that um, answer. So if we have a look, 34, Harry has a large solid cube made from 64 small cubes. He removes some small cubes. He now sees this view when he looks at any of the six faces. How many small cubes are in the object now? And so if you have a look here, um, each face has that center section broken in. And so if you have a look, it's actually quite a thick cube all between. But if we see this here, we've got six faces and in each of the six faces, so we've got six faces and in each of the six faces, four cubes are taken. And so we times that by four cubes and that's actually 24 cubes all subtracted out. Now, once we subtract them out, we still actually have that center cube inside. A center cube that looks like... So this is where your visualization is really important, okay? So this center cube looks like this from the rough drawing. Hopefully you can see how this works. And so you can see this, this is two by two by two, which is equal to eight cubes. And so we'd have to go, how many small cubes are in the object now? And so we'd go, Oh, um, we'd go 24 um, plus 8, which is equal to 32 cubes altogether um, that are taken out. But altogether, originally, um, there are 64 small cubes. So we have to go 64 take away 32, which is equal to 32 cubes left, which is why our answer is B. Okay, so now we're left to our last question, which is question 35. And so question 35 of our mathematical reasoning questions um, is a number, number, positions, determine, determining unknowns um, question. And uh, there was no similar question to this in the 2021 paper. However, question 19 in the sample paper had a similar concept that involved finding probability through a spinner. Okay, so let's have a go and let's try solving it. Question 35. Aaron and Tom have a game where they each spin this spinner once and whoever spins the higher number wins. So we've got one, two and three. Now it says they play this game eight times and during the game Aaron spins two ones, three twos and three threes. Tom spins two ones, two, five twos and one three. There are no draws. So draw meaning if they spin and get the same um, number then that's a draw. Now it says how many games does Aaron win altogether? So if we have a look we kind of have to try and predict or make out where in each turn, what did each person, player, um, spin? And what did the other player potentially spin as well? Now, the key thing is, once you look at the spinner, there are only three options. And the thing that would make sense most logically is that if you spin a three, it is guaranteed that you win, okay? Because that's the highest number. And so we know that Aaron spins three threes and so that means Tom wouldn't have spin, spun his three but he would have spun a, 
a one or a two. Now we can see here that he spun five twos, so we're gonna gonna we're going to actually put the twos in line there. So that's three times, and we're gonna actually put his other twos there. And during this time, Tom, because there are no um, draws, potentially Aaron probably spun a one, his two ones during that time. And then Tom spun his, um, then he's got, we've got, Tom has his two ones as well. And then he's got that one three. Now, same thing with Tom. If he was won that one, then that means that that's the highest number. That means Aaron would have spun something smaller. And so he could have spun a two and he's got three twos there. And so how many games did Aaron win? Well, if we circle the amounts, he won here, here, here. So that's three times. And then he won here and here as well. So he's won a total of five games, which is why our answer is C. Okay, so that actually concludes our paper, Mathematical Reasoning Paper for 2022. Um, boys and girls, I highly encourage you to attempt these questions as well if you haven't done so already. And then as well, and afterwards, if you had any questions that you were still quite unsure of, then you can always look back at this video to gain some clarification or some better understanding. Hopefully you had a better um, insight and view to this, boys and girls, and I'll see you next time. Good luck.